Matt Case has played a whale of a game today, putting the hits on. Out of the shotgun and four wide receivers again against the Cowboy Nickel with Bates in the middle. Here's a pass in the flat, picked oh. up by the Cowboys. Larry Brown may score at the 30. The Dallas Cowboys have won three Super Bowls in four years. Will 1996 bring yet another Vince Lombardi trophy? 29 other NFL teams are out to stop them. The National Football League. No other professional sport has such compelling appeal. Witness the artistry. The intensity. The spectacle. Marcus Allen dives on him for the touchdown for Kansas City. His 100th career rushing touchdown. Move over, James Lofton. You've just been passed by Jerry Rice in the record book. And Dan Marino has the granddaddy of them all now. Most touchdown passes ever. It's America's autumn ritual, stirring up passions that only a hometown fan can understand. I'm Peter King of Sports Illustrated, your host for the 1996 Denver Broncos Video Yearbook, featuring a retrospective of last year's team entitled Thunder in the West, the story of the 95 Denver Broncos, a special Broncos classic segment, a look at the origins of the Broncos Raiders rivalry, and a profile of today's Broncos, proven stars and those on the rise. How do they stack up against the defending Super Bowl champs? Let's take a look at the 1996 Denver Broncos. In 1996, the Denver Broncos will field an AFC contender with an improved cast that is coming off an 8-8 eight eight season. Now the reason for such optimism is that their locker room is filled with high-profile free agents, up-and-coming young stars, and several established Bronco veterans. The problem is that while it has some great individual players, the Broncos never seem to be a complete team. Each year they go only as far as their great quarterback, John Elway, can carry them. Though he's in the twilight of his career, Elway is still the trigger man of the AFC's most explosive offense. On defense, however, Denver is still trying to live up to expectations that big money free agents have failed to deliver. Let's see if we can get you guys excited today. The ultimate prize is, of course, the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, my long-term goal is to get to where the Cowboys have been and where the 49ers have been, and I think uh, my organization is capable of that. In his second season, head coach Mike Shanahan must come up with a defense that will allow the Broncos to live up to his owner's lofty expectations. In 1995, Shanahan met the challenge of finding a way to make his Hall of Fame quarterback both productive and happy. No, it's good. Of course, we had eight guys blocking there, too. I know. As long as you don't play too deep, can we just get <laughs> right. the Right. Right. He's wide open. Put the open guy. No. Very demanding, and I think much different as a head coach than as he was as a position coach, you know, because uh, he has to, not only is he coaching the offense, but the whole football team, so it's, it's different as a head coach. Mike had a lot of things to correct, and he's, he's now got a year under his belt, and I, I love what I'm seeing. I think, you know, he's well organized, and I think we're moving in the right direction. Shanahan needs defense one that dominates against the run and applies much more pressure on opposing passers. To achieve this, Denver invested heavily in defense during the 1996 draft. They also signed big money free agents like number 53, linebacker Bill Romanowski, who last played for the Eagles, and former 49er and Bengal Alfred Williams, number 91, who has never played like the high first round pick he once was. Denver needs increased pressure to boost its turnover production. Last season, Broncos cornerbacks actually had more sacks than they did interceptions. In the secondary, the Broncos again feature one of the game's toughest and most colorful characters, six-time Pro Bowl safety Steve Atwater, number 27. Get out of here! Woo! Take it to the house, kick it! Well, you tried to take 21 head on, didn't you? Oh, Which one? one? On that one, you, you wide now, and he tried to catch oh. the head. <laughs> been doing like this the rest of the year. <laughs> 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 huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't get mad at me, Tito. Cheetahs never win. Come on, baby, come on now. Come on, baby, this is the game too big to call that kind of BS, man. Oh, it's about time. Shut up, man, I want to hear that. Atwater is a rock-solid cornerstone in a revamped defense that plans to give the Broncos a new hard-nosed identity. Just what Denver's legendary quarterback needs most. Say hello out there, buddy. Throw me a pick. Give me a wink when you're coming, okay, would you? Yeah, I will. <laughs> now in his 14th season, John Elway's production is higher than ever, thanks to the new breath of life that Mike Shanahan's offense has given the future Hall of Famer. I think uh, this year will even be better than last year. He'll be more familiar with the system, the offense. And in order to really play a full season, especially when you're 36 years old, you have to have a commitment in the off season to give yourself a chance to go through the season without injury. And John's been able to do that. Uh, you know, he's got the drive and he's got the work ethic to give him a chance to play for a number of years. And at the age of 36, John Elway is still having fun. What's up, dude? I'm still happy. Let's go red left F short, 19 Bob King on it. And why shouldn't Elway be thrilled? Armed with a new five-year contract, this quarterback is flying a spaceship of an offense that was customized around his many skills. We weren't as much seven-step drop as we were the year before. But at the same time, we allowed John to have a seven-step drop because John's a guy that can make plays, and we want to utilize his talents to the utmost. Well, it's given me so many more options. I think that uh, it's, it's an offense that uh, if you make the right read, somebody's going to be there. Everything's precise and timing, and everybody's supposed to be doing the right thing. And so you can, as a quarterback, you can go back and rely on guys being in the right spot and just going through your reads and going through your progression. Plus, at my age, being going into my 14th year, I've got some guy I can dump the ball to. I don't have to do the scrambling and the running around. Good job. So, you know, it was a godsend at this time in my career. Another godsend was running back Terrell Davis, a sixth round draft choice who rushed for over 1,000 yards in his rookie season. Number 30's emergence as a dependable big play runner along with a rebuilt and suddenly reliable offensive line, is paying dividends in Denver. And one can only imagine what numbers Elway might have posted if he could have played in this offensive system throughout his career. That would have been fun, but I, that's something I don't look back on. I'm just glad that at this point in my career, I get to, uh, to play into the system, and hopefully I can stay healthy and play some, for some more years. John Elway has been the heart and soul of this football team ever since I've been here. And with that in mind, uh, I think the better we do, the longer John's going to play. And so, you know, <laughs> I hope he plays forever, but I have to, have to be realistic. All I want is another 10 more years. As you can see, the Denver Broncos possess some impressive football talent. Last year, in Mike Shanahan's first year as head coach, the Broncos were both exciting and frustrating. Their offense was number one in the AFC, but their defense simply had trouble stopping anybody from scoring. Still, there was enough to show the Broncos were on the rise and capable of creating some thunder in the West. Yeah, move the crowd, baby. Get it up, get it up. Here we go, here we go. In his first game as head coach in Denver, Mike Shanahan brought with him the experience of a Super Bowl champion. And armed with a mix of proven veterans and up-and-coming young stars, in 1995, Shanahan's Broncos would shake down some thunder in the West. On opening night against Buffalo, the Broncos made it look easy. You want me to look at the crosser and then throw the three in or? Always look at the crosser in case it's man. Okay. Right. And if it's not there, so the screw. Easy. Easy. Armed with an explosive uh -huh. new offense, John Elway let the thunder roll. Red 25! Red 25! Shut up! <laughs> 
Elway's first pass was a 49-yard completion to Shannon Sharp that helped to ignite the Mike Shanahan era. Anytime you go into your first game, I think you're looking for, first of all, a team playing extremely hard. And you would always like a win, especially when you're playing at home. And I, I saw both of that. So our defense played very aggressive. Denver's defense limited Buffalo to barely 200 yards of offense and produced a valued third quarter goal line stand. The ball is actually at the one yard line. Here we go to the line of scrimmage. Here's Kelly. Here's the give to Gardner. He goes to the middle. No signal yet. Now we get it. Broncos help. No touchdown. But a great defensive stand by the Broncos. There were thunderbolts on both sides of the ball. And offensively, we had a number of big plays, but uh, we settled for a number of field goals. Ruined a hold. It's down. The kick is on the way. It's good. Elam has kicked five field goals. He got the ball in the end zone right at the end. Davis is the lone setback. He's going to get it. And he's coming up the middle. He's going to the goal line. Touchdown! Terrell Davis, the rookie, gets it in the end zone and about puts this one away for Denver. It wasn't exactly a, a performance that you brag about, but we won a football game, and as I said in the beginning, uh, it was some great team effort. Over the course of the next four weeks, however, sometimes it seemed as though something was missing. I forgot my helmet. I'm about to pull up my Thomas. They're trying to make me pull a Thurman Thomas. There were times when it looked as though the Broncos forgot how to win. Losses to Dallas, Seattle, and San Diego tested the team's character. And the only encouraging ray of light the Broncos would see during this tough stretch came against the Washington Redskins when rookie Terrell Davis scored three touchdowns. Yet despite a 24-point second quarter outburst by the Broncos, the Redskins rallied late to tie the game at 31. With 107 remaining, it was time to demonstrate why no other quarterback is more respected by his peers than John Elway. When you step into the huddle, those other 10 guys have to look at you and say, this guy is going to bring us down to win. And that's why John Elway's so good at it. Good job, guys. Way to hold your water. Come on, now. Ready to go, BT. I always thought, you know, this is my chance to be a hero. We're behind. No one expects us to win. You get a chance to be a hero here. So I've always enjoyed it. Hey, if we get two, Shannon, I want a good hole route. Mike, I want you down there, too. Far west right, zoom. Far west right, zoom. Uh, X right. 200 jet Z slant. I want right. Hurry up! A minute seven on the clock. He's been known to be able to be the guy that if they're down in the fourth quarter and he's got the football, I mean, you know, you're in, you're in a lot of trouble. From the shotgun, Elway is back, fires over the middle, it's caught by Davis, gets out of bounds, 60 seconds to go. Tiger. For me in the two-minute drill, Tiger, um, Tiger. I don't ever worry about making a mistake. Come on, boys. Solo left, solo left, 35. I want right. I don't worry about throwing an interception. I don't worry about, uh, you know, if I do this, this could happen. So, I mean, it's really kind of the freest part for me in a football game and a lot of times wish I could play like the whole game like I do in a two-minute drill just because there's no fear. He's looking deep. It comes to McCaffrey. Great catch at the 45-yard line. And you really can't even hear the crowd either. You just get going and it's like playing in the street. Get open. We need to get something done. To the 50-yard line at 35 seconds. He has that attitude that, you know, he don't care if he misses 20 throws in a, a row. But, you know, he can hit the next throw for a touchdown and can beat you. And, you know, when, when you're playing against a guy like that, that his focus is just trying to win the game. From the gun is going to go for it. You don't want to face him. Again, Milburn, he's got the first down as he gets to the 43-yard line. With only six seconds remaining, Elway had one last chance to win the game. Hey, let's say We need it in there. We need to get in the end zone, all right? No, keep your hands in, no mistakes. Far double wing left. A right, 371, X stick, Y looking. I want it. Be ready, Rod. Rod and Smith. Well, they're going to throw the Hail Mary here with six oh seconds God, to go, God. feeling it is outside of Elam's range. Elway's in the shotgun, steps up in the pocket, looking long. Here goes the pass. Rod Smith up. He got it. Rod goes with. Time has run out. Unbelievable. John took a 
look at both sides of the field. He saw corner rotation on one side, he saw the corner off on the other, and he came back and threw a ball that uh, most quarterbacks can't make with that type of velocity. John made a big throw, and obviously Ron made a great catch. Rod Smith's first NFL catch concluded the 35th game-saving drive by Denver's remarkable quarterback. You never give up on John in those kind of situations. Those are sort of tailor-made for him. But uh, am I surprised? A lot of times I'm a little surprised. But, uh, you know, I, I, we, we've grown to expect that out of John. And we all know that John's probably the greatest comeback back quarterback ever. And that's just another example. Here he comes! Week six against New England. Here they come again. The Broncos destroy the Patriots. Here's Elway firing to the end zone. Sharp touchdown. Additional scores by Aaron Craver, Anthony Miller, and number 30, Terrell Davis, blew the game wide open as the Broncos ran away with their first road win of the season. Back goes John Elway from the shotgun. He fires upfield, and it's going to be caught. Miller at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Anthony Miller. The Patriots' offense went 0 for 5 on fourth down attempts against a Broncos defense that also produced two turnovers. This convincing 37-3 win was Denver's most dominating performance to date. One week later, they staged a repeat performance. Monday Night Football. The entire nation, along with another mile-high sellout, watched the Oakland Raiders go down, and go down hard. We're going for it. Yeah, we Understand, go. I'm bringing the heat. We need great breaks on the wideout, and let's be smart on the weak side. We got to get it done. Denver's defense got it done with two interceptions and three forced fumbles. Here comes Fletcher. Ball locked loose. Scramble for it. He got it. Denver's ball. Oakland never gained a first down rushing. Better yet, they never scored a point. Denver's offense rolled up 475 yards. And twice, Elway connected with Anthony Miller for touchdowns. Up, fires it long to the end zone. Touchdown, Anthony Miller! Ed McCaffrey's outstanding catch on a two-point conversion added to this convincing victory. Pass to the end zone. McCaffrey's got it. McCaffrey with a great one. At the halfway point in the season, the first shutout in Mile High Stadium since 1987 suggested that the four and three Broncos were ready to make a serious run at the playoffs. With the crash, Eagle 7 Cliff. Hit it hard. Come hard, come hard. Come hard, D. Denver's defense improved 13 places in league rankings over the previous season, thanks to schemes that were designed to make players hustle and then... Linebackers Alan Aldridge, Dave Wyman, Britt Hager, Glenn Cadrez, and Keith Burns drilled everything that moved. The secondary featured starters Tyrone Braxton, Lionel Washington, Ray Crockett, and reserves Rondell Jones, Eric Thomas, Tim Houck, and Randy Hilliard. In his final NFL season, number 73, Simon Fletcher, ended a masterful 11-year career with 143 consecutive starts and 97 and a half career sacks. Both are franchise records. While Fletcher's dependability will be missed, Steve Atwater's proven skills and temperament will continue to make him one of the game's best free safeties. Atwater intercepted three passes. He also led the Broncos in tackles and earned his sixth straight Pro Bowl appearance. Voted most valuable on defense by his teammates, 
Atwater's play was infectious. In the defensive line, Dan Williams, number 90, and Harold Hasselback, number 96, were impact producers, along with Shane Dronet and Mike Lodish. At one defensive tackle, James Jones, number 93, was a relentless force. Then, there was number 95. Bring it up, baby! Michael Dean Perry was an extraordinary run stopper who blended quickness and power into punishing results. There was always a sense of urgency in Perry's performance, along with a sense of humor. What's up, Bono? How you doing, man? Hanging in there, baby. Hanging in there. Double team blocking was a way of life for number 95. But double teams weren't the only dubious tactic Perry faced. Hey, Hey, he hold it, man! Good tackle, Alt. Good tackle. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Beautiful day here in Mile High. Beautiful day. Who said it snows in Denver? It doesn't even snow in Denver. In week eight, Ralph Tam's usually reliable weather prediction was buried in a blinding snowstorm against Kansas City. Near right, near right, fake 15, quarterback keep pass right, on one, right? On this day, the Chiefs and Mother Nature proved to be too tough for the home team. 25, shut up! Kansas City won 21 to 7 and they would win a rematch eight weeks later even though the Broncos nearly stole the game at the end. Denver's late season frustrations included a loss in Philadelphia that left its quarterback seeing stars. Well, I tell you, that's how you lose your quarterback right there. Ooh. You got a bell wrong. You all right, buddy? I'm working on trying to get him back. What you got dinged in here? Denver's dazed playoff dreams all but vanished week 15. Probably one of the most disappointing games of the season was against Seattle. And we had the game won 21 points up in the fourth quarter. And if we would have won that, and there's a lot of ifs in the season, we're in the playoffs, and once you get to the playoffs, you got a chance to make something happen. But we didn't, and hopefully we'll get it done this year. In 1996, maintaining offensive production will once again be a top priority. I'd like to get something where if I, I can run Shannon down the gut, and then I can throw it out of side. But I can't, I can't do anything on Omaha I'm, I'm, with those no safety. We're trying to move the chains and giving John, uh, being as sharp as he is, the opportunity to make decisions, give him a lot of outlets, and at the same time still be able to take advantage of the big play. Yeah, let's go, let's go red, right, A, right. 200 jet. 200 jet. Uh, X logo, okay? And if it's not there, we'll just kick a field goal. All right, one way, okay? In his 13th season as the franchise quarterback, John Elway's performance confirmed that reports of his physical demise had been greatly exaggerated. Armed with Mike Shanahan's new attack, number seven discovered new ways to showcase his exceptional arm and uncanny mobility. Now he's flushed out, but he's revived some time. Dances over the middle, lets it go long toward the end zone to Pritchard. At the age of 35, Elway's skills seem to be better than ever, thanks to a little help from his friends. Great job up front. Great job up front. The most explosive offense in franchise history began up front with center Tom Nalen and guards Mark Schlereth and Brian Habib. Left tackle Gary Zimmerman had another Pro Bowl season, and along with right tackle Broderick Thompson, the offensive line cut Denver's sack total in half from the previous year. They're, they're blitzing, they're coming from everywhere, and he's got all day and tomorrow to throw the ball. The Broncos scored 30 points or more seven times and discovered the benefits of Mike Shanahan's new offense. This offense is pretty cool because you're never in third long, you know what I mean? And just in case you've got a couple bad plays such a different brain and mindset. Yeah. 
Third and two, dude. Yeah, let's go to double cross Z quick and we'll do it on a uh, Zebra this time. We get double cross Z quick. Fire, fire. Despite missing three games with injury, fire, fire. Tight end Shannon Sharp smoked opponents with a team high 63 receptions. <laughs> While Sharp earned a spot in the Pro Bowl, Anthony Miller did the same in a season that included a Broncos record 14 touchdown receptions. John fading back on second down, looking upfield, fires it over the middle. It's caught again by Miller. Miller trying to get outside. Down. It's gone. He's at the 50, he's at the 40, 30, 20, accelerates to the 10 to the 5. It's a touchdown. Anthony Miller recorded a thousand yard season for the fourth straight year and he averaged over 18 yards a catch by being the pot of gold beneath Elway's legendary rainbows. That thing was another blue darter, and this was a hummer in the middle of the field. He let this thing go, and that was a Rich Gossage fastball right down the heart of the plate. Elway led the AFC in passing and fired a career-best 26 touchdown passes. In a win over the Arizona Cardinals, number seven passed another milestone on his way to the Hall of Fame. He's going to find a man open. It's Miller. He's got it at the five. Touchdown. Late in the game, Elway became only the seventh player in NFL history to pass for over 40,000 yards. Red 25, set hunt. Here is Elway. He's going to bootleg out to the right side. He passes it to Kramer. 35, 40. He's got it. 45, 50. And down to the 49-yard line. John Elway's just gone over 40,000 yards. The Broncos said they weren't going to stop the game. Well, the players took the matters into their own hands because the whole bench is out of the field. In a career made famous by stunning fourth quarter comebacks, John Elway also has stats that rank him with the greatest quarterbacks who have ever played pro football. And he's not done yet. Welcome to Mile High Stadium on a sunny November afternoon. Hi everybody, this is Larry Zimmer along with Dave Logan, the Denver Broncos and San Diego Chargers. Glenn Milburn's opening kickoff return of 86 yards set up a Terrell Davis score as the Broncos ran off three touchdowns before San Diego knew what hit them. Hit it, hit it. Elway looks at Pritchard, now he's going to fire to the left side, and it'll be caught again by Miller. He races to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! Anthony Miller just now ran everybody all the way for the score! Boy, you gave him a great move. Elway completed his first eight passes for 143 yards and two touchdowns. Here's John Elway with a football, fades back, looking, steps away, fires to the end of the end zone, Sharp, touchdown! Well, what a nice catch. But instead of a route, hey, Jerry, give me some. the Chargers slowed the Broncos down, then caught up. Suddenly, with 3.43 to play, it was Elway time. There's certain guys that just uh, rise to that level at that particular time. Red 25! John Elway is one of them. Red 25! Shut up! The ironic thing about it all was that they did not throw a pass in that situation. Uh, actually, what they did was run the ball. On six straight bruising carries, rookie Terrell Davis hauled the Broncos 53 yards closer to victory. Right the, there we go! Right the, there. Davis has the handoff. He's coming to the middle and he works his way out to the 48-yard line of the Chargers. What a fine run once again by Davis. Red 25! Shut up! <laughs> Always going to give it off to Davis.
Davis again, and here comes Terrell. Bumped up his way ahead across the 40 yard line. Hey, Chuck! Let's get some, baby! And here he comes. He's got the first down. He's still going. It was now up to one of the NFL's best clutch kickers, Pro Bowler Jason Ear. All right, here we go. Snap the spot, the kick. It is good! That's what happens when you stick together. Had things going right, we had things going bad. Made a big drive at the end. Defense stopped them on that last drive, gave the offense an opportunity. I mean, that's, that's the first one. We know what our goals are, we've got to get it done. Before we do that, anybody that has 176 yards and about 30 carries, Six round draft choices don't normally have a dramatic impact the first year. But number 30, Terrell Davis, not only proved to be the exception, but an exceptional runner who became the lowest drafted player in NFL history to ever rush for a thousand yards his rookie season. <laughs> After the second game, I saw a player that it was really important for him to make plays. And so anytime you got a person with that type of attitude, that type of desire, it catches a coach's eye, and that's what Terrell did. And then when he did get the opportunity to play in a full-time role, he was a guy that we considered a complete football player, and all he needed the opportunity to prove himself, and he did. as far as running the ball on anybody. They can put uh, nine or eight in the box, and I think uh, we execute well. You know, our linemen do an excellent job. So. Despite missing two games to injury, Terrell Davis amassed 1,484 total yards, placed second in the Rookie of the Year voting, and was chosen by teammates as the Broncos' offensive MVP. The Oakland Raiders needed a win to make the playoffs in the season finale, while the Denver Broncos were looking to sweep their arch rivals for the first time since 1987. Touchdowns by Anthony Miller and Aaron Craver, who also rushed for 108 yards, gave Denver a 17-14 halftime lead. But in the third quarter, Raiders' big plays tested the resolve of this young team. We've been in some shootouts, so we've been up, and people have caught us, and at the same time, I think we looked at it the same way, that uh, they had gotten, gotten ahead by 14 points in that area, and how are we going to react as a football team? Were we going to just kind of roll over, or are we going to make plays, and our team responded. The Broncos thundered back, thanks to the brilliant catch by Ed McCaffrey. Play, Elway passing, McCaffrey makes, throw! Oh. What a great catch! Oh, man! McCaffrey bounced it up and then snagged it with one hand. That is John Elway's 26 touchdown pass, and that is a new career high for him. And this is the two-point conversion. Quarterback draw. Here comes Elway! He's in! John Elway goes into the quarterback draw, and the Broncos have tied it up 28-28. Denver's offense needed another possession, and its defense responded as Dave Wyman stripped the ball and Glenn Cadrez recovered the fumble. With 3.52 remaining, John Elway began his 37th fourth quarter comeback. The blitz is coming. Elway steps away from it. He's running and throws under on. Pritchard at the 35. Ten plays later, the game and an 8-8 eight and eight season rested on the shoulders of Jason Eaton. Though the Broncos weren't going to the playoffs, neither were the Raiders. Yard line from 37 yards out. The kick is in the air, and it's good! But in the future, the Denver Broncos believe that the thunder that they started in 1995 will roll them back into the playoffs in 1996. 
I think we ended the season with a very excellent offensive football team. We were one in the AFC, and so I think there's a lot of promise there. Down goes Frazier! some strikes on the defensive side of the football. We've got a couple more acquisitions. We've got a full draft. we got the attitude and the team playing extremely hard, and I've got some high expectations out of this football team. Now that you've seen the Denver highlight, let's take a trip back into Broncos history. Few NFL rivalries have ever matched out of the Broncos and Raiders. It's a conflict built on hard hits and bruised egos. There may be respect between the two, but the fact is, these teams have never liked each other. Never will. Huh? Okay, don't get mad at me, Tito. Cheetahs never win. The Raiders and Broncos rivalry is as bitter today as it was in its heyday in the 70s when an established Oakland team clashed with the up-and-coming Broncos. We had to beat the Raiders. Guys that were injured would get ready to play against the Raiders because we need everybody we could to play the Raiders. I think they hated us more. Hey, I hate the Raiders. I hate them. Oakland Raiders, I hate them. <laughs> Who didn't hate the Raiders, right? <laughs> but then again, they were easy to hate. They dressed in black. Uh, which made them look bigger than life. Uh, they had some guys who were real characters on that ball club. And I think that physically, I had never run into a ball club like that when we, when we began to play. The only way a rivalry ever heats up is, is both teams are good. When Denver was down, it wasn't a good rivalry. Denver didn't stay down long, sparked by the emergence of their hard-hitting defense. But hard hits were old hat for the Raiders. When they released the ball, Tatum hit him. It was unbelievable. The contact and the sound that I heard. <laughs> he was angry. I said, man, great hit. What, what's wrong? He said he didn't drop the ball. Who was public enemy number one for the Raiders? I think probably <laughs> the most despised Bronco uh, probably at that time was uh, probably a guy named Tom Jackson. Well, quite naturally on Denver, there was no guy on the field that had a bigger and louder mouth than Tom Jackson. Tom Jackson was a tremendous athlete that talked all the time, always jawing, always to trash talk. And I can't ever remember coming out of that locker room without telling them, I intend to kick your ass today. Jackson's bluster was backed up when the Broncos finally blew away the Raiders in Oakland. They were ahead of us, beating us last quarter and they had a chance to go for a field goal. Mark Braden comes up and he says, and I mean, he was serious, man. Coach, it's time for that play. And I said, Coach, what the hell play you talking about? He said, well, the play we practiced this week, uh, you know, where we fake the field goal and throw to Jim. And he looked at me with those eyes and he said, Coach, it'll work. And I looked at him back with an even stare. And I said, Coach, it damn sure better work. Jim in his big black top shoes, black high top shoes, he's running down the left sideline. I mean, there is nobody within miles of Turner wide open, catches the ball at the 15. He'll score a touchdown. The grand old man has done it. Denver's orator extraordinaire exulted in victory at Coach Madden's expense. He ran by their bench and the famous quote, it says, It's all over, fat man. I said, that's it. It's done. Further fuel for the rivalry's fire was added by Denver's fanatical fans. That Orange Crush group was tough in Denver. They were very tough. They would know, you know, when you were getting ready to go out and stuff, and they'd start stamping their feet. You know, and you're trying to talk. You know, oh, you know, and you'd boom, 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 boom. Then you'd have to go out the door and they'd throw stuff at you. They would just pelt you with everything they had up there. We got bombarded by about 30, 40 snowballs, you know, and, you know, we turned around, all the people are booing and cussing at us. Get the hell away from me, Jack, they're throwing at you. I said, no, Tony, they're throwing at you. The defining moment of this matchup came in 1977. We knew that this was going to be the ultimate uh, test for this franchise. Haven Moses had saved his best for the best, catching five passes for 168 yards and two decisive touchdowns. Uh, Haven Moses 
is the first thing that comes to mind. His long catch down the sideline, uh, uh, initial uh, moments, opening minutes of the game, uh, starts to put us in a frame of mind and yeah, we can get this done. When Oakland recovered a fumble by Rob Lytle and the officials awarded the ball to the Broncos, Raider Ranker reached a boiling point. In the following day in the Oakland Tribune, here's the big picture with the fumble clearly out of his hands while he was trying to jump across the line. For Denver, the emotion from that game transcends time. We have had championship teams, we've had Super Bowl teams, but that first one, uh, I don't think anyone will ever forget that.